Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to your October 2019 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So October is a month where it starts out very social and ends up very introspective. And uh, this is kind of a gradual thing because we have some of these personal planets going into the 12th house for Sag, and this is the house of the hermit, the mystic. Definitely not social energy where you're out and about and extroverted, very thoughtful, um, sometimes can be quite uh, dreamy. This is the house of the dream state. It's definitely a psychic house. This is the house that Pisces rules in the universal chart. So it's very, um, you know, psychically active. And there's even that karmic connection. So past life influences or themes may uh, sprout up for you. As the month begins, the sun is in Libra. And Libra is great because it's an air sign. And it forms a sex style to Sag. And therefore, there is that affinity that we have with this particular sign that makes life sparkly, especially because it's in the 11th house, which is a house of friendships, the house of the groups that you belong to or just the collective. And so this can run the gamut from any kind of business networking that you're doing, or perhaps if you have your own business or you're thinking of starting a business and you want to get uh, people on board with you, you want to get the word out that you're going to be doing uh, whatever it is that you're doing. The 11th house is the house of the internet. Uh, we can look to the third house as well, but the 11th house, because it has a connection with the collective and technology, is definitely associated with that. So you could be very involved in internet-based stuff in October. It's also the house of hopes and wishes. So this can be a time of really uh, dreaming big of what you want to achieve. And maybe, who knows, maybe there are some things that um, are coming into fruition because one of the things, well, I mean, I guess I can talk about this now, even though it's... Um, not the next transit that I was going to talk about, but Mars is currently, and I'm recording this in September, in the 10th house of career for Sag. And going into October, this is the same. On the 4th, Mars goes into the 11th house. But, you know, Mars is a, is the god of war. So when Mars is in the 10th house, Sag may be, doing everything in your power and my power, since I'm a son in Sag myself, to make things happen. And you're just like pulling out all the stops. Um, a lot of you will be listening in September, so you will be nodding your heads, I'm sure, at least a good portion of you. And in some cases, even clashing with authority figures. And this would be like in a career setting, it would be those people that you, that are above you or that you go to for some kind of assistance. And you may feel like you're butting heads, like you, like there's a power struggle. Okay. And the reason that this is important is that when Mars goes into the 11th house, you may be like, saying, you know what, I want to completely be the captain of my ship. And I can't do that under these circumstances. I'm always having to answer to somebody. I want to answer to myself and myself only. And so you're just like really throwing yourself into creating your own business. And with Mars in the 11th, you're very active with the, with the Internet, uh, setting things up and even enlisting other people you know, to have these contacts, maybe through your group of friends or through 
whatever your career is at the moment. And like, let's say you say, you know, I'm going to be a, some kind of a consultant and, uh, I'm going to take all these business contacts that I have and I'm going to use them to my benefit because I haven't been respected professionally. So I don't owe them anything. They haven't, they certainly haven't, um, you know, treated me with respect. And of course this isn't going to be true for everybody, but for those that are, that might be your, the way of thinking. Um, but I do want to go back a day, uh, because on the third Mercury goes into Scorpio, which is the 12th house. So you might become kind of mum about something. And, and this is cause uh, Scorpio is a very secretive sign. So for everybody, it might be, everything might be more hush-hush. Conspiracy theories might be really um, on fire at this time. But in terms of you uh, specifically, Sag, because Mer uh, Scorpio is the 12th house, Mercury there, which is the way your mind works, the way you're communicating, becomes internalized. So you could be having these amazing spiritual experiences that are entirely in your head and they're hard to describe. Mercury in the 12th house is not the best for articulating things in a way that, you know, mainstream society can, can really, um, understand. It's, it's much more abstract than linear but it's very creative. So it's great for people who think artistically and, um, deriving from the spirit. I think of, um, the late Wayne Dyer, who always would say in spirit inspiration. So great for artists for sure. Engineers, not so much, but artists totally. And on the same day, Pluto goes direct at 20 degrees of Capricorn. Actually, I had to record this. I'm going to have to record some of these other um, astro ones that I have started doing because I did not see that there were a couple that uh, Mercury goes retrograde in October and Pluto goes direct. Now, Pluto is an outer planet. It's a generational planet. It takes 15 years to go through one sign. So typically it is not thought of as going to have a personal influence, but let me tell you something. I think this may be one of the culprits in Sage's um, year of having Jupiter in our sign and maybe not feeling like Jupiter has been paying off for us because Pluto is in Capricorn, Saturn is in Capricorn, and um, so is the South Node. Now, the South Node, um, I think at the time of um, this last lunar eclipse in Capricorn, that it was within orb of both um, Pluto and and the South Node, the, the eclipse, and that might have been one of the reasons why there has been this sense of intensity and, and feeling like, like the world is against you. I don't know if any of you have felt like that, but Pluto retrograde, um, because of the nature of what Pluto represents, which is, um, a like, Feel, I mean, it's a karmic influence and it has this desire to reform. Uh, but, you know, when you reform something or transform it, you know, think of, think of what the Pluto uh, ruling Scorpio in the eighth house and death. You have to kill something off or you have to remove it, okay? And that's where it gets a bit tricky. It's also because it's a karmic, it's like a cause and effect type of a influence, a boomerang effect. If you have been doing something shady, it can come back to you. Um, and th 
This has been in Sage's second house. Now, this is where timing, uh, where your particular uh, degree of sun or rising comes in because all of these transits that I'm mentioning may not be exactly where I say they are, and I'm not going to get into early, late, and middle degree things. That's just too much for me. But um, suffice it to say that for those of you who have experienced Pluto in your either your solar or natal second house, you may have experienced something going on with your money flow. And this is also because Saturn has been retrograde. I'm recording this when Saturn has gone direct, yay, in in um, Capricorn. Okay, so that we're going to see the easing up of the money situation. And then when um, the south node leaves the second house in 2020, then we will... And we will have Jupiter there and we'll be, yes, because, you know, actually Pluto in the second house can be great for, you know, creating wealth. So don't get it twisted. This is not something bad. Um, Pluto in the second, it can, it can transform your ideas of money. Uh, if, and uh, Pluto, just to let you know, Pluto has been here since 2008 January just at the beginning of 2008 when in the United States we had the economic downturn or collapse um Pluto was right there and and you know um perfect since since the United States is a cancerian country that it formed an opposition uh with the United States but for Sagittarians this was the second house this is the second house of earned income. And I, you know, I don't even want to say in earned income, just say, just say money, because actually, um, I have personally experienced money that I didn't earn coming to me when Jupiter was in my second house. So, um, just, just to let you know that, um, you know, Jupiter going into Capricorn, can in December and having a solar eclipse there on December 26th in Capricorn with Jupiter um, in a tight conjunction there is something to look forward to. So, you know, I think that this last quarter of 20. 19 Sages is going to be a good one for us. I think we're going to finish strong because now we have Saturn direct in the second house in October. We're going to have Pluto direct on the third and, um, and then we're going to have Jupiter going into that house in December. So anyway, um, if you have felt some kind of oppressive tendencies, um, with your money situation in any way, I think it's going to ease up. And oh, oh, another thing too about October is that Jupiter is going to come out of its shadow. Let me see the exact date for that. That might be a great. Now I thought that Jupiter, um, I thought that it went retrograde at 24 Sag. Let me check this out here. Yes, it did. So actually, officially, I thought I heard another astrologer saying October was when it comes out of its shadow, but actually it's going to be November, which is which is great because in October, um, Jupiter is pretty much there. You know, um, you know, we end the month with Jupiter being at 23 Sag, it goes, it officially goes to the 24th around the 5th of November. Okay. So that's going to be the degree when it's, when it's, uh, stationed, um, retrograde. And, um, that means that 
all of those, you know, at that moment when it went retrograde and all whatever was going on in your life, now we can fully move ahead. And the 25 degree mark comes around the 10th of November. So chin up, you guys. I think we're going to really finish this a year strong. So getting back to some of the other things that are going on, we have um, Venus going into Scorpio. On the 8th, and this is the 12th house, so if you've met somebody maybe through your social circle, especially since you've been socializing so much lately, Sag, and you, maybe it's even a friend of a friend, and they got your number, you got their number, you called them, they called you, and you go, you know what, I don't, I don't want everybody to be talking about us. Let's just keep this on the down low for a while. Um, that's, you know, kind of secretive romances taking place. Venus in the 12th house can also be money. I think Venus can bring, bring money wherever she lands. Maybe it's like good juju from past life. You get some kind of windfall. I think of the ace of pentacles for some reason. Um, but you're just, um, maybe this is a soulmate. So it's a past life connection with this person that you meet or that you reconnect with. On the 13th, we have a full moon at 20 degrees of Aries. Aries for Sag is the fifth house. The fifth house is the house of romance. So anybody that you meet, you could be like, wow, this is really blossoming. This is reaching, you know, heights that maybe very quickly, especially if it's a soulmate, who knows? You're just like some, I always say it's good to know somebody for a long time before you, uh, you know, marry them, live with them, whatever. But some people, they meet somebody and within a matter of months, they're married, you know, or they're, they're living together and they stay that way. It, it doesn't, you know, you can't go by rules a hundred percent of the time. It's not going to be that way, but there's some kind of revelation with the fifth house. Now I have to say, Fifth house can be conceiving children, and the fifth house is recreational sex. And full moons are very uh, fertile. So enough said about that one. Um, this could be great for creative types, again, with Mercury in the 12th house. And also Venus, I didn't say this, but Venus in the 12th house can be also artistic, um, inspiration or just kind of like in that, that, um, artistic vibe happening, but coming from a very spiritual influence. And that could be like the full moon in your artistic sector of the fifth house could be like really conceiving of this amazing work of art and, and if you are an artist, this could be a defining um, piece for you, something that when you look back on your career really is the highlight or that it, it, it boosts you into kind of recognition in that sense. You could be completing a project perhaps or ending a love relationship, a love affair, what have you. Um, if you have been working on your own business, this could be, um, finishing the finishing touches on it. Now, because we have a Mercury retrograde at the end of the month, um, you know, you have to decide whether you want to launch, you know, in this time frame or not. But in any case, um, on the 23rd, we have the sun going into Scorpio, that 12th house. And then for sure, you're going to be more introspective, more 
into yourself, um, less social, less out there in the world. This is your incubation period uh, for your solar return, Sag, when you have your birthday and even when the sun goes into Sag in general. So this can just be like um, doing a lot of reflecting on the past solar cycle. What have you learned, and especially with Jupiter in, in your sign? And um, maybe um, formulating plans for the the next uh, cycle. This might be a good time for that. Being in the womb of creation. And um, on the 27th or the 28th, depending on where you live in the world, I would say if you live in Europe and uh, the southern hemisphere that you are going to have this on the um, 28th. A new moon in Scorpio, and this is going to be at four degrees of Scorpio. And um, this is great for new spiritual practices in particular, new ways of approaching um, anything that has to do of a more intuitive exploration, let's say. And that is, that is like, um, that might even involve in some cases more of the creative side of life. I would, I would think in a way, because you're drawing on the spiritual and, uh, but especially any kind of spiritual practices are very much indicated with this. And then on the 31st on Halloween, we have a Mercury retrograde. How will that affect us? having a Mercury retrograde on Halloween at 27 Scorpio. So a late degree of Scorpio. And um, so this will be in that 12th house. Oh, how cool. Having a Mercury retrograde in the 12th. Wow. Uh, you might be recalling your past lives. Who knows? <laughs> the 12th house can be repressed memories. So they may come out more with Mercury retrograde. But also just like... Um, since it's um, past lives, you know, it doesn't get much more retrograde than that, does it, Sag? And um, so this is going to be a great time for you to go into deep dive into some of the unconscious mind. And maybe there are practices, you know, I've never done this myself, but there are Kashyyyk Record readings, I would associate the Akashic records with the 12th house. And sh I would asso associate, associate Mercury with the Akashic records because basically, um, to me, I mean, maybe this is not entirely correct, but I call the Akashic records the spiritual internet. You know how they say nothing ever really leaves the internet because you have the way back machine? This is the spiritual way back machine. <laughs> so uh, if our hard drive, our soul or our consciousness, which is connected to the soul, so our conscious mind, we, if, we have our, if we have that hard drive wiped clean before we're born and therefore we don't remember our past lives. Now, of course, that's not true for everybody, but most of us are probably like that. Um, the Akashic records is that maybe is that what they call the book of records where, where there's everything that every human being and every living creature has ever done. It's like, a, you know, a book of all these actions. Now, you know, we could look at it technologically as in a database that contains all of this information. And I believe when, like, you know, there are these authors who are very prolific and they write like so many books a year and it seems almost impossible. And they write a lot of historical fiction. I think that they're tapping into the Akashic records and that they have this ability to take like actual things that have happened and make them into fiction. And they might not even know this on a conscious level. 
well, Satch, if you're a writer, this could be really great for um, delving into things from the past. But I really think that this can help you therapeutically to um, – and, and, you know, even with the shadow, which is associated with the eighth house, I think that in order to really connect with the shadow, we have to really have that mental um, – understanding um, where we see how the past has informed our present. So I think this can be a really valuable Mercury retrograde for you spiritually, Sag, and cre even creatively um, come to think of it. So anyway, I hope that you have a wonderful October. If you'd like a personal reading, please uh, check me out at rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below, and if you sign up for my mailing list, you get 19% off your first reading. Take care. Bye.